let's keep exploring Halloween for Art Starts Explores. The special, uh, the special workshop series continues. Um, we're going to explore costumes um, as far as textures in costumes and um, making your fantasy um, into uh, a reality. Um, so if you haven't joined us for a previous session, if this is your first one coming in, that's cool. You can, you can do any of our Halloween workshops in whatever order you want, but you'll see that in a previous workshop uh, episode, we made some dress forms. We made some figures that will be able to dress up our, um, our costumes. So we'll be able to dress up with costumes. If you don't have a dress form ready to go, that's okay. You can get started. Maybe you went online as well and you found a dress, um, a dress up doll or figure, or maybe you just want to start uh, drawing one yourself right now while I'm talking. That's up to you. But just letting you know that you can go back to another workshop and check out our dress forms um, if you want to make a dress form with us. So my name is Kay, and I'm going to move my sticky to the side so we have a bit more room to be talking about costumes. In this session, um, I'm asking if you have some cardboard, and we've already transformed our cardboard into um, the, the dress forms, but you can keep making your costume out of cardboard. There's no reason why you couldn't use cardboard, um, but the cardboard is there more for the dress form. But paper, we're definitely going to use some paper. The paper doesn't have to be perfect. It can come from your recycling bin. It can have drawings on the back of it. It does not have to be perfect, white, um, sharp lined paper. Whatever you can find is great. Some scissors, although when you're using paper, I always encourage you to rip paper as much as you can because why not? It's paper and we have permission. Some mark making tools. And remember, a mark making tool can be everything from a marker, a pencil, some pencil crayons, some crayons, whatever makes a mark on a page is a mark making tool. I've suggested you grab some crayons if you can, if you have some crayons. The reason is because uh, when we're looking at textures, sometimes it can be fun to use crayons that don't have a jacket on them anymore to go around uh, wherever we are making and find some cool textures. Um, if you don't have any crayons, that's okay. You don't need to have crayons, but if you do have crayons, pull them out. The paper roll, same thing. That was more for the dress form. And if you don't want to make a full dress form and you just have a paper roll, there's no reason why you couldn't just dress up the paper roll. It's a nice way of having something sit nice and flat that you can put uh, fabric on just to see how it will fall. And that's, and that's fine. Why couldn't that represent um, a, a body, a human, right? Why not? And then some tape to keep things uh, stuck down. If you don't have any tape, that's okay. You can just lay everything out in front of you um, and try not to sneeze <laughs> when you're putting it all together. Maybe take a picture when you're done um, and then you don't need any tape. So those are some of the things that I'm gonna suggest that we have while we start making um, some of the costumes. All right, I'm gonna put that to the side so we have a bit more room. Move this one over as well. There we go. Just so we've got a bit more room to be making. Okay, so before we start making our costume, maybe you have a costume in mind already. Maybe you know exactly what kind of costume you wanna make. Whether or not you're going out trick-or-treating, whether or not you're making costumes for home. And you know, I love Halloween because it gives us the excuse, it gives us a reason to make costumes. But there's no reason why you can't make a costume any time of the year. If you have access to um, fabric or to materials or to ready-mades, things you can find around um, your house or classroom, community center, wherever you have permission to grab ready-mades, things that are already made and put them together, why can't you wear a costume in June? Uh, maybe you wanna take a photo session. Maybe you're going to a costume party. Maybe you and your friends are having a tea party and you're dressing up as your favorite book characters. There's no reason why you can't wear a costume any time of the year. Halloween is just a great excuse for it. Um, and so before we get started, I just wanted to talk quickly about this idea called equivalence. Have you ever heard that word equivalence? It's kind of a big word. Um, Basically what it means is part of the word equivalent is equal. 
right? And so when you think about the word equal or same, there's, um, there's a picture that probably forms in your head, right? And maybe uh, when you think of equal, it has to be exactly precise. It has to be the same. So one equals one. They have to be the same, right? So when we think about math like that, but let's take math a little bit further, right? When we're talking about the equal sign, it just means that this side has to balance this side. It doesn't have to actually match. That's why two equals one plus one is the same thing, right? But this doesn't look the same as this, but it is the same. And I like to keep that in mind when we're thinking about costumes, because sometimes it can be really, it can be really tempting when we are thinking about a character. And let's say your favorite character in a book is, uh, has blonde hair and you have brown hair. And the character in your book is really heavy and tall and big and you're smaller, maybe you're skinnier. And so we think about all of those things when we're comparing when we're when we're making costumes. And sometimes we can feel like maybe we're not doing a really good job because we're not exactly the same. Or maybe we spend a lot of money or maybe we get really caught up in those details. Um, and I'm here to tell you that that's not necessarily important because all you're doing is trying to balance. You're trying to come up with an equivalent, something that is similar, but it doesn't have to be exactly the same. Another way of thinking about that is when you are making art, um, what you can do is, is you, find, uh, you find a painting that is maybe is really famous or that you really, really like, okay? And so let's say maybe it's a, a famous picture of a portrait <laughs> that looks like this. Maybe they got big hair. There we go, right? And so maybe this is a really famous um, picture. So sure, you could go and you could print this. You could go and you could make a copy exactly of it, but it's still, it doesn't really belong to you. It's not your version of this, of this uh, painting. What you could do, however, though, is you could do something in a different medium or at a different size, or just the fact that you yourself are drawing this thing that is inspired by, or it, you wouldn't have thought of doing it without it. it. This one can't exist without this one here, but it doesn't have to be exactly the same. They can exist as two separate entities and still be connected. So for this one, I'm just gonna draw it again. I really liked this picture in an, uh, an art gallery that I saw. And so I got out my crayons and I decided I would also do an equivalent. I would do something similar. It doesn't look exactly the same because using a crayon is going to do is going to produce something that is different than if you used something in pen or you use something as an oil painting, right? These are the same picture or they're connected, but they look different and that's okay. They can be good all on their own. So when you're making a costume, you don't have to have a blonde wig to be the perfect princess. You don't have to have a giant sword. You don't have to be um, able to fly to be able to make a really great costume. Your body wearing that costume is an equivalent. It's you getting to play the fantasy and, and um, try something out that you wouldn't necessarily try all the time. But it doesn't have to be perfect. Your body doesn't have to be the same. Your skin color doesn't have to be the same. Your gender doesn't have to be the same. It can be, it can be an equivalent. It can be you in the costume of that fantasy, of that idea. And of course, we always want to be respectful. Um, one of the reasons that it's great to be able to be making a prototype an example of your um, costume small first is because we always want to be respectful. Um, and just because we are um, doing these equivalents and they're good on their own, we want to make sure that we're not copying something that really isn't supposed to be copied. So for example, on Turtle Island, uh, all around the all around the world, but especially here where it's, um, it's a little bit, it's uh, a little bit easy to accidentally 
um, do something that might not be respectful because you don't know better, we don't want to dress up uh, in Indigenous costume because Indigenous people aren't a fantasy. They're still here. Their culture is still being practiced. They are a real thing. And it's not something that we can step into. So if you wanted to grow up one day and become a ballerina, you could work really hard and you could go to school and you could become a dancer. And that's a job. Being um, being part of a Coast Salish nation, being part of a culture, growing up somewhere um, and your family doing and practicing certain traditions and wearing certain clothes, that's not a job. That's not, that's not something that, that um, that group of people can just take off. It's not a fantasy. And that's the difference. So if it's a character from your favorite book or your favorite movie, you want to think about um, who those characters are and how, and, and, and be respectful for the people that maybe that character is related to. That's why it's really fun at Halloween to dress up to be things that don't exist in real life, right? You're never ever going to hurt somebody's feelings if you decide to make up your own monster character. Especially if you draw it out of your head, right? If you're not drawing it from something that you've seen before and you try and make that that costume and you wear that costume, you don't have to worry. You're being respectful because this is your, your creation, right? Nobody else did this character before and so now you've got a really unique cool costume that is uh that's going to be respectful and really fun and you're not going to see anybody else wearing that same costume okay so that's a lot to think about but we want to keep those things in mind when we're making right that was part of practicing respect so let's think about starting to dress our characters up and so maybe you've got an idea already of what you want to do. If you have a specific character and you have reference material, whether that's uh, reading a book with your eyes or with your hands when you're reading Braille and you've got that picture of or those details of how you want to construct your costume, you've got reference. You've got something that you can read and you can check off like a list. But if we don't have a reference, if we don't have a favorite movie, if we don't have a character that we're pulling that we've been able to uh, see or read about before, there are, what we can do is we can start with um, drawing a character and just coming up with a bunch of different drawings. If you're not really sure, you could also do a scribble on the page and your scribble is going to look different. And then you could start coloring in some of the scribbles to see what happens. Maybe you'll come up with something cool because you're coloring this. You know what? I'm kind of seeing a shape here. So I'm going to put a head over here. So maybe there's my head. And this is drawing two dimensional, right? You can, uh, we've got our dress forms here, but I'm just going to start my prototyping phase by just drawing something here. Okay, so maybe, maybe these are pieces of fabric that are all these kind of round shapes like this. Maybe these are corduroy. Right? So just by drawing a couple of lines, maybe these are corduroy patches. Oh, these kind of actually look like leaves as well. So what if I made a dress or an outfit that was nothing but leaves? Maybe I'm a leaf pile. Maybe all of a sudden my costume is a giant leaf pile. And I didn't have that idea before I started drawing. It was just something that because I made a, a couple of those interesting little shapes on the outside, now I've got this really cool, and maybe my feet are down here. There's my hand, and my arms will be coming out here. Right? And so I didn't have that idea until I scribbled and I started looking at the page. Now I can be like, well, how am I even going to do that? And that's going to be nice and warm if I'm going to go outside. Maybe I could have a toque and it doesn't, maybe I, I jumped into a pile of leaves and that's my that's my uh, my costume is jumping into a pile of leaves, and so I can wear my warm hat because that's what I would be wearing if I jumped into my big pile of leaves, right? So that's just quick drawing before I even got started, and I and it's very likely even if somebody else had the idea about doing a pile of leaves, they won't have it exactly the way that you drew it because you scribbled it. It came from your brain. It came from your hands. It came from your shoulders. It came from however you made that mark. So it's going to be really, really unique. Okay. 
So these are some ways of getting inspiration. You can also go around your, um, wherever you're making your, your classroom or your friend's house um, or your bedroom or wherever you go, you can take a piece of paper. You can take your crayon if you've got it. You could also take a pencil crayon. And I have this, I have this step ladder that's right beside me right now. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece of paper I'm going to take my, my crayon, I'm going to put it on top of the step ladder, and then I'm going to rub my crayon on top of it so I can get the texture of the, um, of the step ladder. What are textures that are nearby you? There we go. So now I have this neat bumpy texture and I have this cool challenge. I have two challenges now. First, this is kind of, this is kind of fun, right? This is cool visually looking, but how, how could I make this in real life? What in real life? And while we know it's a step ladder, I probably can't wear the step ladder, but what kind of fabric could I find? Is there a material? that I could find in real life that has this kind of bumpy texture. Maybe going to the fabric store, you can find something that has a lot of beads on it. If you have somebody who has access to screen printing, so that's where they can actually like all the, the pictures that are on your t-shirts, if you can actually print it on. Sometimes you can go to the craft store and you can print something on your printer and then iron it on. So if you wanted these, these textures like this, but as I'm thinking about these bumps, what I'm thinking about is it kind of looks like scales, right? So like, like on a lizard or on an alligator. And all of a sudden I've got these cool patterns that I can now use, these textures that I can use and start dressing some of my forms here. It's gonna be easier for you to see my form if I put it on a white background. There you go. Okay, so now I've got this cool form. Maybe that's a shirt or maybe I'm gonna rip it up and maybe those are just shoulder pads. Maybe I'll do two of those. Okay, there's my shoulder pads and then come down into a shirt there. There we go. So now I've got this kind of alligator or scale like shirt and I only had the blue or the purple crayon, but I can imagine in my head, maybe that's green or maybe I'm a purple alligator. So this is a fun way of coming up with ideas. If you're not really sure what you want to wear or if everybody in your class or if everybody in your school or if everybody at your daycare, they're all wearing the same costume and you want to do something a little bit different. Or maybe you had it in your head that you wanted to be an alligator, but you're not really sure how you wanted to go about it. This is a fun way of being able to test. So maybe you want to make a dress out of the alligator um, outfit or fabric. Maybe you want to make a pair of pants. Well, those look like comfy pants. I want those pants. Pajamas. There we go. And then maybe we need to come up with a head. So I'm going to go and maybe, maybe it's out of cardboard. And then we, oh, now we know that because we found this cool texture that we could go with our cardboard and we could actually take a tracing of the, of the step ladder to get this cool pattern to be able to make our alligator head. Okay. So maybe that's my mask. Maybe, maybe it would be a hat. Oh, maybe there's eyes of the alligators on top. And notice I'm just saying maybe, because I don't know. I'm just trying it out. It might not actually work. And that's okay, because when we're prototyping, when we're just testing, it doesn't have to work. We can make mistakes. It doesn't, like we can, we can try something out and go, oh, that doesn't work. Isn't it good that we figured that out before we went and bought some fabric or asked all of our friends to go find us some fabric, or we asked um, a grown up to make us a costume and they did all this work and then it turned out and we put it, put it on and it was like, oh no, I wish, I wish I had had a, 
hat or I wish I had had some gloves or um, something um, that you wouldn't have known if you hadn't maybe tried this prototype. And it gives the person who is helping you out, if, if somebody is helping you out, something to see so they can also be working from. There you go. There's my purple alligator outfit. I added some teeth up here at the top. What else? Maybe this is just a purple monster. Maybe I need some gloves. Yeah, okay, so some, some gloves out of this. And then, and then I, would, um, I would glue some claws at the end of it. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> right? And so by trying all of these things out, you can make these, these guesses as you go along. If you had fabric in um, wherever you're making, um, you could cut small pieces of the fabric out and put it, like actually cut it out and put it on top of your, um, of your figure to see what it looks like. You can change the color Right. So for this one, I used I used purple. But if you had different colors, you could see what it looks like with different colors. If you wanted to have a rainbow alligator, you could get all your crayons out. It can be super fun just as a game to see how many textures you can find in the house and then make a cool costume out of the textures and then ask somebody what they think it looks like. Working with a partner can be really fun because they might be able to come up with something and see something or think of something that you wouldn't even have considered before. Okay, so one last thing, just because it feels right to, um, to end this session by ripping paper, because you know how much I love to rip paper. Well, fabric is something that actually rips pretty easily, depending on the, the fabric kind. So if you have an old t-shirt, if you have some cotton, some old pajama pants, some old pajamas, something made out of cotton that has started to rip and you're thinking about maybe throwing it out, what I like to do, with cotton is I like to rip it into small pieces and use it for um, as an art rag so that I can clean up when I'm using art. I can um, I can cut it into long strips and use it to cut or to tie things down because then it's a nice stretchy um, cotton piece. But knowing that because I've used the material before, all of a sudden, what would happen if I ripped a whole bunch of um, t-shirt material into pieces. Right? Always an excuse. Whenever I can rip paper, I'm always going to rip paper because it's so much fun. There we go. All right. So now we've got all these strips of material. What can we do? We could wrap ourselves up with the, with the material, right? That's, that's a very a very classic um, monster in in Halloween is um, is a, a haunted bandaged creature, right? Sometimes they'll they'll say mummies. And you want to do a little bit more research about mummies because um, mummies do have some importance um, in Egyptian culture, and you want to be respectful about that but there's there's lots of um there's lots of bandaged monsters um in in books and uh there we go you could be somebody who got in a skiing accident right all of a sudden now you can be somebody um who has a great story a narrative of why you're all bandaged up right have you ever wanted to pretend like you have a, a cast so that all your friends could um, could write on it? Well, what if you had some, um, what if you wrapped up an arm and then you let your friends uh, draw on the, on the, the fabric, right? Because remember, if it's just a piece of, or it's a ripped up t-shirt that you weren't going to keep anymore, all of a sudden it becomes something that you could actually turn into an activity, right? So thinking about the story of your costume can be really very fun, especially if you're doing something unique. There we go. So that's, I'm going to take this away because now you actually can see it on the green, right? So maybe you start bandaging yourself up. What if you decided, if it was a white t-shirt, what if you decided to color 
each of the strips. And this, do you see how easy it is for me to be trying something new by just ripping up the paper? And I didn't use any tape there. I just kind of tucked it on my figure. And this was a figure that we drew before imagining that they are, they're sitting down because they're in a, um, they're in a mobility device. They are in a wheelchair. And so if I wanted to take my piece of paper again and draw out the wheelchair that this person is sitting on, there we go. Maybe it's a really, it's a big wheel over here. It's, a, it's one of the, um, the outside wheelchairs that they have. Um, so there's really, really big tracks on this one. But maybe uh, your wheelchair has uh, smaller wheels. And so you just draw them smaller. And here, so I've got that idea now. I'm going to finish the circle. There we go. There we go. And I know that, that that's where the seat was. And then it comes up like this. And then we have and maybe your mobility uh, device looks different. Maybe you have a cane, uh, whether it's uh, white or whether it's black, whatever whatever color uh, your your cane is, and how or why ever you re you use it. Maybe you have crutches. Um, maybe you have uh, a hearing aid that you can put some jewelry on. Some some people will decorate their hearing aids. Maybe you've got glasses and you can put, um, you can stick some decals on your glasses, right? All of these things, this is what I'm talking about, about the equivalents. You don't have to not have those things to have a really cool costume. They can just be part of your costume. They're you as that costume. Okay, so there's my, there's my wheelchair for my figure there. And so they're sitting in their wheelchair. So now when we're thinking about our costume, so we had all of these pieces of material and I just said, what if we were to color them? So I'm going to color them just real fast. There's, so there's some red. Maybe I'll do two. Red. There's some red. Okay. And then we'll take some orange. And then we'll take some blue. And you could do this. So if you had if you had a white cotton shirt, you could try this with pencil crayon. You could try it with paint. You could try it with ink. You could find some dye from a shop if your uh, if your grown up feels comfortable helping you with that. There's some there's actually some spices and herbs that you can use that will um, that will stain clothing as well. If you are using um, turmeric which is a spice. It gets really beautiful yellow uh, for, for dyeing clothes. You can use beets to get a really, really cool red. Uh, you can use avocado to get a really neat pink. There's just, there's so many uh, things that you can try out when you're, when you um, have fabric, if you wanted to, to dye it. Okay, so now we've got all these colored strips. What if we wanted to dress as a rainbow this year? And so now, whether you want to wrap that around yourself, right? Maybe the costume isn't just about you. Maybe you are going to tie it to your arms, but then you're going to let it hang over the back of your, your wheelchair. I'm going to fold this like this. Actually, I'm going to rip it off so because we wouldn't see the other side of the wheelchair. There we go. So it's going to go like this. And then maybe you see, see part of it hanging down over there. And so as you go really fast in your wheelchair or as you move around, you'd have a cape of a, um, of a rainbow behind you. Or maybe, it, maybe it's going to be your shoulders or maybe you're going to get a rainbow t-shirt, right? Maybe you'll get two rainbow t-shirts and you put one t-shirt on the back of your, um, your mobility device and then you both will have rainbows. By you both, I mean the chair and you. Cool, right? And it just gives you an idea. It doesn't have to be perfect. Here, I'm not even gonna layer it properly. I'm just going to show the head at the top. Oh, and maybe that would be fun as well. Maybe it's a poncho. Maybe it's a, a, an over, over the shoulder outfit that you're going to wear. I need a yellow. I'm gonna draw some yellow here. Right? 
And so all of a sudden you can be a rainbow. And that's a fun fantasy, right? There's nobody who is a rainbow. You trying to show yourself as a rainbow though is a really kind of cool, beautiful idea that maybe nobody's seen before, right? And now all of a sudden you've got this really interesting costume that you didn't have to go spend a whole bunch of money on that is going to be super unique that not everybody's going to have. Um, but also that you, you know, you made yourself, you came up with that idea. It's your costume. And that's, and that's a pretty cool thing. So whether or not you're going out this year, um, trick or treating, whether or not you are able to safely gather, whether or not you, it's just you, um, you and your siblings, you and your foster family, you and your grandma, you and your teacher, you and whoever you are going to be with um, at Halloween this year. I hope you have uh, lots of fun. I hope you get a chance to wear a costume if you want to wear a costume. I hope you get a chance to make a whole bunch of cool things. And so you can do any of these workshops at any time in any order. Um, this was the last workshop that I ended up recording, so that's why you're kind of getting a, a goodbye for, the, uh, for this part. Um, but I'm going to be making things for Halloween all week because I love celebrating Halloween. And it doesn't just have to be about the day. It can be just about thinking about the day, about the days leading up to. How many things can you make? How many costumes could you come up with? How many of your dolls or dress forms could you dress? Take pictures of them. Draw in your sketchbook. Draw scribbles every day and see if you can come up with a different monster costume. There are so many ways that you can celebrate and try making things on Halloween that don't just have to be about a costume that you um, go out and you get candy for. There's so much more that you can just be trying uh, by finding things and making. So good luck making. I can't wait to uh, see what you are making. I'd love to see it if you want to uh, post online, if you want, if you have permission and you can take a picture. I'd love to see your costumes this year. If you have any questions for me, please go ahead and ask me in the comments. Um, I'm always checking out the, cost uh, the comments throughout the week and I look forward to seeing you uh, in two weeks for our next Art Source Explorers. Next week, we're going to be doing a uh, drag story hour. It's going to be really great. We've got two fantastic performers um, and so I will be manning the camera for that but I will be back. You'll see my hands and you'll hear my voice and you'll read my captions uh, in two weeks when we continue Art Stars Explorers. Happy Halloween everyone!